In summary, we have the time independent Schrodinger equation in this form here. We can gather the constants together in two different ways. The first way is defining them as 2m outside of e minus v over h bar to be squared, which I'll call k sub 1 to be squared for short. If we do that, we can rewrite the time independent Schrodinger equation in this fashion here. Note of course that it's plus k sub 1 to be squared. The general solution to this is a linear combination of cosines and sines. So we have a1 or a sub 1 times cosine k sub 1x plus b sub 1 times sine of k sub 1x, which can be equivalently written as complex exponential functions if we use Euler's equation. So the bottom line here is, if you come across the time independent Schrodinger equation, and it's written such that there is a plus between the second derivative and zeroth derivative terms, then the solution will be a linear combination of cosines and sines, and you can just put that straight down. Of course, if you want, you can calculate the wave number, or excuse me, the wavelength, using uh, this expression here. This is in contrast to when we define the constants slightly differently. So we have our time independent Schrodinger equation again, this time we swap the order of e and v, bringing the minus sign outside. We define that as k sub 2 to be squared. If we use k sub 2 to be squared, the differential equation now is of this form here. Note of course we have a minus k sub 2 to be squared. And the general solution to this form of your time independent Schrodinger equation is a linear combination of real exponentials. So if we have a plus k sub 1 squared times psi, we're going to get a linear combination of complex exponentials. But if we have minus k sub 2 to be squared times psi, we're going to get a linear combination of real exponentials. So, thanks for watching. I hope it was useful. Please pass it on to your friends and happy studies.